Vaping is really popular, and a lot of people assume that if it's legal, it must not be dangerous. But what does the science tell us? Is vaping harmful? That's a question I get from my patients all the time. So let's get into it. When you vape, you're inhaling something into your body. So the first question is, what's in that vapor? It starts as a cartridge of e-juice, and if you look at the components in the e-juice itself, they seem pretty harmless. There's propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, various different flavoring products, plus or minus nicotine. If there is nicotine, it makes vaping addictive. But what about the other substances? Well, propylene glycol is the main ingredient, and that's also used as a food preservative, it's used in asthma inhalers, it's used in those smoke machines you see in clubs, so it's nothing new. But to turn that e-juice into vapor, the e-cigarette uses what's called an atomizer to superheat that liquid. And in the process, some of those substances get transformed into new chemicals, and parts of the device itself also get into the vapor. Close to 100 different substances have been identified in that vapor, including silicate particles, metal particles like nickel, silver, and lead, and a slew of chemicals like acrolein, which is a herbicide, and carcinogens like acetaldehyde and formaldehyde. Now the idea is that vaporizing a liquid should still be less harmful than burning tobacco. And several studies have shown that for what we think are the most harmful chemicals, concentrations in that vapor are much lower than concentrations in cigarette smoke. The problem is that we don't know what concentration causes harm, and e-cigarettes haven't been around long enough for us to look at long-term effects. Immediately after vaping, some people do experience throat or mouth irritation, sometimes headaches and even cough. Many studies show that vaping with nicotine transiently increases both heart rate and blood pressure. More importantly, studies show that chemicals in that vapor do cause damage to human cells in a lab setting. And when we measure the effects of e-cigarettes in both animals and humans, there's evidence that vaping causes inflammation in the lungs, it suppresses the immune system, and it can damage our DNA. To go along with that, several studies suggest that e-cigarette users are more likely than non-smokers to have a chronic cough and phlegm, more likely to have asthma or flare-ups of their asthma, and more likely to have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. They're also more likely to report heart attacks. Now the challenge is that these are survey studies, so we can't be certain that the e-cigarettes are actually causing these complications. What we do know is that nicotine e-cigarettes are addictive particularly in teenagers, and that nicotine can disrupt their brain development, which is not actually complete until they reach the age of 25. We've also seen some life-threatening complications from vaping. You might have heard of the term EVALI, which stands for e-cigarette or vaping product associated lung injury. This emerged in the summer of 2019 when thousands of e-cigarette users across the US and Canada suddenly became really ill with inflammation in their lungs. Over 2,800 people were affected, most of those people were under the age of 35, many of them ended up on a ventilator, and 68 people died from this. It turns out that the majority of affected people had used an e-juice that contained THC, which comes from marijuana. And it's thought that a very specific chemical that was used as a thickening agent in those cartridges caused the lungs to react. And this speaks to one of the challenges with regulating what's contained in vaping products especially because people buy their cartridges from all sorts of places, including online, and studies show that cartridges often contain chemicals that are not listed on their packaging. There's also an issue with regulating the device itself. There have been faulty and malfunctioning e-cigarettes. In some cases, that's led to explosions causing injuries, like burns. The next, his pocket explodes into sparks and flames. Or worse. Vaping's still pretty new, and the technology is constantly evolving. But on the balance of things, it's clear that vaping can harm you. Aside from the addictive effect of nicotine, there are toxins in that vapor that do seem to affect our health. Those harms are probably smaller than with cigarettes, but that doesn't mean that they're not harmful, and their long-term effects remain unknown. Now, if you're a cigarette smoker and you're trying to quit, you may be willing to take that risk. But do e-cigarettes actually help you to quit smoking? For more on that, stay tuned and subscribe to The Feed.